Thorne strummed on the last, final note on her guitar, not knowing how the audience would respond. For a brief moment there was just silence. Then came the applause, and it came and came and came. People were widely cheering, whooping and shouting their names. Thorne could have swore someone shouted Freebird in the audience. It was mainly compressed with teenagers and people in their early to or mid-twenties, but there were some older adults as well. Thank you, thank you, Thorne smiled. She couldn't believe it was finally happening. It was just like the dream she had so many times, but now it was a reality. After a minute or so of clapping and cheering, the curtain closed. You girls did great, the green-haired female exclaimed as she shut the curtain. Yeah, we were wicked, Dusk exclaimed. Girls, you were marvelous, just marvelous, Gus rushed backstage. Yeah, you were all badass, Nia agreed, as she was quick to follow Gus. Thanks. It was crazy having all those people cheering and shouting our names, Forna admitted it. Yeah, it was just like in your dream, Bridget added. Forna was a bit struck by the odd comment, as she hadn't remembered telling Bridget, Nia, or Sam about her dreams. In fact, she hadn't even remembered telling Dusk or Luna about her dreams, but apparently she did. Luna, how are you feeling about all this? Sam quickly interrupted. Well, it was nice to have people cheering for us, but... Luna stopped. She had a conflicted look in her eyes. But you're feeling overwhelmed? Bridget presumed. Yeah, a bit, Luna admitted. I liked getting to share our music with everyone, though it was just we were doing it in front of all those... people. It's completely perfectly normal to feel overwhelmed at first, Gus said. Especially when just a few weeks ago, you were in a small town band performing in front of a group of 20s. You get used to it. Okay, Luna smiled. I'm glad it's normal to feel that way. I'm sure you girls are all wiped out from the trip and the concert, Gus said. If you want to head straight to the hotel, that's fine by me. That'd be nice, Forn agreed. Yeah, I'm exhausted, Luna yawned. I'm wiped too, Dusk admitted. Wonderful. I booked us reservations at the Alma Hotel. Gus informed. It's quite a nice hotel from what I heard. I've never stayed in it since it just opened last year. Sounds nice, Thorn yawned as she packed up her instrument. The other girls quickly did the same as they headed out to the exit where they came in. Oh my gosh! Someone screamed from behind them. It was a teenage girl with blonde hair who was probably around 16. She wore a pink t-shirt and black leggings. She was with another girl who looked around their same age who had brunette hair. This girl wore purple sweatpants and a turquoise top. I can't believe it. I'm actually standing in front of the Hex Girls. The brunette gasped. Can we get your autographs? The blondie inquired. I'm Bailey, by the way. I'm Miranda, the brunette introduced. Sure, Porn smiled. The blonde-haired woman handed her a pen and two pieces of paper. Porn quickly scribbled down. Thanks for being such a big fan, Bailey. Sending all this love. Along with her signature, she even handed the picture to Dust, who signed it before handing it to Luna. Forn wrote the same thing on her paper, except this time exchanging Bailey's name for Miranda. Thank you so much, Bailey squealed. You guys are like my inspiration. Hex Girl's my favorite song ever. Thanks, it's nice to meet you too, Dusk replied. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it, Bailey exclaimed as she took back the autographs and ran off in excitement with Miranda. That's really cool that they look up to us so much, Forn smiled. Indeed it is, Gus replied. That is perhaps one of the greatest things about sharing your music with the world, inspiring someone by your work. Yeah, Luna nodded, looking a bit less anxious. I guess it's pretty cool. Gosh, I'm so wiped, Forn sighed as she collapsed onto her bed. The others had already gone to their rooms. Bridget, Nia, and Sam stayed in one room, while Gus stayed in his own private room. She still needs to change into pajamas, but even felt like too much work right now. I'm glad we had enough energy for the concert, Luna chuckled. Honestly, I think it just went as amazing as it would have have, Dusk replied. Maybe your good luck necklace did you a favor, Foreign joked. I actually wasn't even wearing it, Dusk remarked. This awesomeness was all me, baby. I mean, us. 
Did you even bring those two necklaces we you found along? Luna asked. Yeah, they're in my suitcase, Dusk said. I think they're cute, but it's not they're actually good luck, at least. I don't think so. Aw, oh, but what if they're not good luck? Why did you bring them along? Foreign tease. Probably because I think they would look badass on me, that's why. Dusk playfully snapped back. Well, maybe if I do have need a little luck, or at least, I will admit that's possible. Even if it's not possible. Oh my god, Dusk believes in superstition? I never knew I'd see that one day, Foreign laughed. Don't let it get to your head, Wiccan girl, Dusk rolled her eyes. Anyway, I think I'm going to pass out if we stay up any longer. I slept like shit in the van, and I can't sleep in cars. Yeah, I didn't sleep well either, Foreign said. Besides, we got to leave here by 11 if we want to get to Melkoway by 4 tomorrow. Good night, Dusk responded. Good night, Dusk, Foreign replied. Good night, Luna. No response. Luna? Foreign looked over to see her bandmate. Sure enough, she was already fast asleep on one of the beds. She must have been more tired than all of us. Dusk laughed. Do you want to share with Luna or should I? Foreign had momentarily forgotten that there were only two beds in each room. She was a bit comfortable with her friends and bandmates to share a bed with them, without being awkward. Oh, right. You can have the other bed, Foreign offered. I could share with Luna. All right, sounds good, Dusk said as she lay down. Foreign was wiped down too, so she quickly got into her pajamas out of her suitcase to change in the bathroom. She was the most certainly more tired than she ever been in a long time, so she knew it would be the best sleep in her moment as her head hit the pillow. Foreign woke up to her open eyes in the empty room. She noticed Dusk's pajamas previously tossed on the floor next to her suitcase, so she figured Dusk and Luna must be down at breakfast at the state of the hotel room. It was quite honestly a good mepitor for the girls' general levels of neatness. Luna's clothes were folded neatly and tidy in her suitcase, whereas Dusk's clothes and the stay with the pajamas from the previous day were dumped on the pile on the floor. That's how Dusk's room looked back at their apartment as well. So it came to no surprise. It didn't particularly bother Foreign, since she was somewhere in between Dusk and Luna's levels of neatness. Besides, she knew her friends would quickly pick up on the clothes in their own good time. Foreign quickly slipped on the purple suitcase and then Banshee's t-shirt on with some black leggings from her suitcase. After quickly getting ready for the morning in the bathroom, she headed downstairs to eat breakfast with the others. Just as she reached the elevator, she realized it was probably going to be best to bring her suitcase with her, given it was already close to 10 and they would need to get ready to check out soon. She had already completed her morning routine and was fully packed, so there was no reason to bring her suitcase down to her expected things. Foreign then turned around and headed back towards her room. When the black-haired goth unlocked the door, there was a gasp. However, it wasn't her own. To Foreign's surprise, she saw Bridget, standing up in the room over by Dusk's bed. Oh, Bridget nervously gasped. Um, hi, Foreign said awkwardly. What are you doing in our room? I'm really sorry I scared you, Bridget's voice calmed. I'm so mad at myself. I accidentally forgot my brush at home. Thus said I could come up here and borrow hers, since we are the same kind. Oh, sorry, you just surprised me a little, Foreign admitted. Well, baby, we'll have to try to stop and get you some if we get to Milliki early enough. Yeah, that would be great, Bridget replied, still seeming a little bit embarrassed. I was just stopping here to get my suitcase, Foreign replied. I'm headed down for breakfast now. Okay, I'll be down in a moment, Bridget said, taking Dusk's eyeliner out of her makeup kit and heading to the bathroom to apply it. Don't forget to lock the door room before you leave, Foreign reminded as she headed back downstairs with the elevator with her suitcase. Good morning, Foreign greeted once she got to the confidential breakfast down from the hotel's kitchen area. She wasn't feeling that hungry at all this morning, so she just grabbed some cereal with milk and some coffee. The black-haired goth just sat down next to the others, who were all, with the exception of Bridget, sitting in the booth area. Good morning, Luna and Dusk both replied at the same time. Luna seems more perky and upbeat, whereas Dusk seemed exhausted. Good morning, are we ready to take on St. Louis today? Gus inquired. St. Louis? Dusk perked up. Shit, I was even more tired than I thought. I was thinking we were going to Millowake. We are, Luna confused as well. Just trying to make sure we were awake, my groovy gothic chicklets. Gus chuckled. 
We should head out within an hour if we want to get to Millwake in time. We just need to stop uh, to get Bridget's makeup too, Fawn reminded. She forgot her brush at home. We should have time for that, Gus thought for a moment. Perhaps right before dinner. The trip is only five hours away, so driving wouldn't take nearly as long. So be sure to eat up though. We won't want to have time to stop again till dinner. The concert's at seven, so we'll need to eat dinner and stop at Bridget's makeup while we still have the time to set up and eat. Aw oh, man, why do we just have- couldn't we just fly everywhere? Sam complained. Touring doesn't mean the girls are instant billionaires. We still have to pay attention to our finances to ensure our traveling expenses are relatively cause-effect, Gus reminded. We want to maximize the amount of profits they'll be getting from this tour. I guess that makes sense, Sam said. So look like we wish they would have flown. Fawn quickly shoveled down her breakfast, feeling like it was imminent while she was looking forward to exploring a new city. She found herself missing the casualness in her home a little bit. It was only for a month, though, and the girls may never have a chance to do this again. Does anyone still have packing to do? It's getting close to time to leave, Gus pointed at the clock. I do, Gus said before explaining any further. I have to put together my suitcase, though. I can't... I can go down and do that now. You could bring my suitcase down, Dusk? Luna inquired. It's all packed up. I just didn't think to bring it down the stairs. Yeah, I could do that, Dusk said. Thanks. Luna appreciated it. Did your girl slip well? Gus turned to his attention to the remaining girls. Yeah, I was asleep almost instantly, Thorn said. I was so tired. I think I fell asleep in mid-conversation with Dusk and Thorn. Luna added playfully. Our room was pretty comfortable, Bridget responded. Yeah, I slept like a rock, Sam added. Well, if you girls like this hotel, then you're going to love this next one, Gus exclaimed. We'll be staying at Pistfer's Hotel in Melquay, and some presidents of his very country slept there. In fact, William Kinley, Ted Roosevelt, William Howard Taft, and Woodrow Wilson, Warren Hardling, and even John F. Kennedy. Whoa, that's amazing, Foreign exclaimed. The building is quite beautiful, Well, Gus added. It had elements of Roman Reval and the medieval Europe agriculture. Not to mention that the rooms are overview of the Lake Michigan. We are performing tonight again, Luna interrupted. You'll be performing at Turner Hall, which is a building in, built in 1853 that was originally a town hall, but then became an official facility, Gus explained. Now it hosts a restaurant and a ballroom in the latter which will be you'll be performing in. That sounds beautiful, Bridget replied, overhearing the conversation as she just came downstairs. At that moment, Dusk came downstairs again, with her suitcase as well as Luna's. All right, is everyone ready to go? Gus inquired. All of the six girls nodded. Then let us be off, Gus declared. Even though it was a little more fast-paced on tour, Ford was loving the opportunity to travel in the country and couldn't wait to visit a new city tonight. Their trip to Milwaukee had flown by quickly, especially considering they'd been in the car for 20 hours from the prior day. Bridget had offered to drive the entire time, since the trip was relatively short. The girls had been discussing at putting out merch, which is something they had talked about for a long time, but not ever seriously considered. I think it'd be cool just to have the album cover on a black t-shirt, Dusk suggested. Maybe I put our band main name in red letters above it. I think that'd be wicked. Or maybe a picture of us doing the pointed I'm gonna put a spell on you thing from the Hex Girl music video, Luna suggested. Personally, I think a picture of us in a purple shirt, like with spider web design or something. That would be awesome, Foreign suggested. What about that photo of you all playing your instruments, Nia suggested. Or even just a black and white photo of you guys on the shirt. For an old timey look, Bridget offered. If the shirts sold well, you could expand by putting your stuff on leggings, dresses, sweatshirts, ball caps, and even socks, Sam listed. I don't think we're popular enough to do socks yet, Luna teased. But I like the t-shirt though. Yeah, me too, Dusk agreed. How does that work, Gus? Foran asked. Is it tough to put a merch? Hardly, Gus chuckled. <laughs> These days with mass production and printing, you could easily put any logo you wanted printed on the relative ease. In fact, 
the company I've worked with in the past is quite literally called Merch Made Easy. That sounds promising. Foreign got excited. As soon as you decide on the design, I can make a call to the company and have them start making shirts for you, Gus informed. That's awesome, Foreign said. Which design are we going to pick, though? I still like the cobweb spider idea best. I think we should just do the album cover, Gus disagreed. It's nice and simple. Eh, Luna seemed skeptical. I guess. I still prefer put a spell on you pointing thing. Why not make the decision whenever we, we, you could do all of them? Bridget suggested. Seriously, like my dad said, it's not hard or expensive. Plus, that would give people more variety to choose what design they like best, or collect all free, if they're hardcore fans. Yeah, I guess you're right, Vorn agreed. Excellent. I could put in the call tomorrow if you like, Gus offered. Absolutely, Dusk exclaimed. Wow, I can't believe that we're getting our own freaking merch now. How much we could have charged for these? 25 each? I think that's a bit steep, Gus chuckled. Perhaps $10 a t-shirt's more reasonable. You're not Elton John. Yeah, I think $10 is more fair, Dusk, Luna agreed. Why not try 25 if we get it, though? We're a big ticket act now, and people are going to be start willing to be paying a lot, Dusk counter courage. I think it's not fair, though, Dusk. We shouldn't just make people pay tons of money just because they will. Foreign disagreed. Ten dollars is plenty reasonable, and we'll still be making money, I think. The t-shirts only cost about four dollars to make, so indeed you will, Gus informed. You will still be earning just a bit double of what it costs to make. I know you didn't intend to be selfish, but there's a difference between making a fair amount of money and being greedy, Dusk. Yeah, I guess you're right, Dusk muttered. Admittedly, Foreign was a bit worried about the blonde-haired friend. It felt like it was slowly pushing the envelope of the band uh, badass and o empowered to being self-absorbed and acting like people owed things just because she was fabulous. Thankfully, before Foreign think too hard of it, Gus changed the subject. Alright, Exit 1E is coming up in just a little bit, which means there's only a few minutes remaining, Gus informed. Thank goodness, Sam exclaimed. I'm tired of all the driving. Well, if you're ready to uh, drive in, you're going to have to get used to it. <laughs> Gus chuckled. We're only on a day two of 28. Where are we eating dinner? Luna inquired. I recommend Broadway Bar and Grill. They got burgers, salad, sandwiches, anything you want. I personally love their egg salad. Gus informed. Sounds like a great place, Bridget responded. Sam, Nia, and Luna nod in agreement. Sounds wicked, Dusk exclaimed. Let's do it. The name Broadway makes it sound like an upscale, too. Yeah, I'd be up for it, Foreigner agreed. I doubt it's upscale, though, Dusk. It's a bar and grill. Perhaps it's not upscale, but the management is still incredible, Gus replied. It's run by a local family, and they're so incredibly kind. This restaurant is so fabulous, I doubt this place will ever close. Foreigner's first thought was happiness, thinking perhaps it would be like Jack's. She admittedly hadn't loved the impersonal nature of Minneapolis, so she hoped Milwaukee would be different. Bridget had parked a car nearby a parking garage, where the girls all walked to Bar Broadway Bar and Grill. After walking past a brick building, the green paint, red awnings of the restaurant stood out. The Broadway Bar and Grill had two levels to it. The top level, having five windows, and that the blinds were closed. The bottom level had two sets of free windows. The second set had the words burgers, malts, and hot dogs on the inside of each window. At first, Ford presumed that maybe the family lived there in an upper level, while the restaurant was on a lower level. However, she quickly noticed that there was a sign pointing to the grill being downstairs, and the bar being located upstairs. And at the very top of the building, was a proud of the culture declaration that the building was established in 1895, written in green letters. A potted shrub in an electrical box and a green trash can outside of the building, along with a single tree planted at the very edge of the building, stood a street lamp painted green. Wow, this place is so nice, Luna exclaimed. Yeah, it feels like home, Foreign smiled. Luna held up the door open to the restaurant which was painted a dark shade of red. 
A bell above of the door dinged as she opened it, and everyone walked in. Hi! A waitress was wearing a black outfit and exclaimed, My name is Taylor. Would you prefer a booth or a table? We'd like to booth if you have one. Dust turned out quickly to check if anyone had any objections. No one seemed to. Of course, right this way, the waitress said, as she led them to the nearest booth. The restaurant seemed relatively quiet, with just a few people eating. It made sense, though, as it was only 4.30, and most people weren't thinking about dinner yet. The other patrons mainly consists of seniors. So where do you folks are from around this area? Taylor inquired. We're traveling here from Massachusetts. Bridget mentioned. Awesome. What for? Taylor inquired. Don't tell me you know what they are for, Taylor. Another waitress excitedly shouted. She, like Taylor, was also wearing a black uniform, waitress uniform. You know these people, Natalie? Lee? Taylor asked. Yeah, they're the Hex Girls. You know they've got that Hex Girl song right now in the huge. The one goes like this. Natalie attempted to wardrobe the tune of the song. It sounded a bit off, but Foreign thought it was just sweet, since she knew the lyrics. I'm a Hex Girl, and I'm gonna put a spell on you. Alright. Wait, you guys are them? Taylor gasped. Oh my gosh! I've got to tell my parents. They love you guys. Since I'm going back to the kitchen... What would you like to drink? I'll just have water, Warren said. Me too, Luna replied. Yeah, same, Bridget answered. Lemonade, please, Sam said. I'll have lemonade as well, Gus ordered. Dusk and I would like some Mountain Dew, Nia remarked of Dusk's order from yesterday. Awesome, I'll get that for you guys right away, Taylor promised, as she scurried off to the kitchen. Her excited calls for her parents would still be heard. Mom, Dad... That's so sweet that she recognized us. Foreign smiled. Yeah, that's never happened when we were in public before. Besides an O'Gaven, Dust commented. Yeah, we'll get used to it, girls. Gus smiled. As you start releasing more albums, they'll most likely prove that you're not just a one-hit wonders. It will likely be tough for you to go anywhere without being recognized. Whoa! Dusk lit up a smile. Her smile grew big on her face. That's gonna be wicked. Foreign wasn't exactly sure how she thought of it. It would certainly be just an adjustment. A bit strange at first, but she could see herself potentially getting used to it. Luna, on the other hand, she was the only one free of the free who looked uncomfortable with the thought. Foreign thought about asking Luna if she was okay. Perhaps maybe to make Luna feel more uncomfortable. So she ignored the red hair head's nervous look. Mom, Dad, do you know who this is? Taylor exclaimed as she brought her parents from the back of the kitchen. Taylor's father had gray hair and was wearing a black dark blue shirt and tacky pants, while Taylor's mother wore a gray sweater and black pants. It's the Hex Girls! Oh my goodness, Taylor's mom exclaimed. You girls must be on tour now. Taylor told us about the tour. We've been following you rise to fame ever since your song star hit the charts, and it's pretty cool to watch. Taylor's father said. Thanks. That's really sweet. Foreign appreciate it. Yeah, we're on tour. We have a show right here tonight. We would have come, but we can't really afford to buy tickets, unfortunately. Business hasn't been doing great around here. Taylor's father admitted. I'm so sorry to hear that. Gus sympathized. I am a manager and I've been to this restaurant a number of times, actually. It's always seemed so busy. Business has been slow for some reason, Taylor's mother answered. We wish you girls the best, though. I just know you girls are going to be as big as N-S-I-N-N-Y-C, the Spice Girls someday. We just know it, Taylor's father smiled. You girls seem to be the most talented bands I've ever heard in a long time. Thank you, Luna appreciated. A dinging noise could be heard at the door, followed by footsteps of three new customers. We better go seek those customers. It was great talking to you, though, Taylor's father said, as he and Taylor's mother walked away to greet the customers. It's really nice to meet you guys, too, Dusk replied. Once they were far away, distance away, Foreign began to speak in somewhat a quiet voice. See, Dusk? This is why we don't jack up the prices for our merch by 600, Foreign scolded. She hated to school her friend, but she thought it was a perfect example of how Dusk's greedy. 
I deserve everything because I'm a famous attitude of harmful of to their fans who can't afford much. Yeah, Dust blushed. I guess you're right. At that moment, Form got a marvelous idea. She wasn't sure if Gus would be okay with it, but she certainly wanted to try. Gus, can we give away tickets to our concert tonight? Those people seem so nice, and it's so sad they can't make it to our concert, Form pointed out. Well, I don't see why not, Gus smiled as he dug through his pockets for a few extra tickets. That's awesome, Luna exclaimed. Thanks, Gus. You're the best. Hey, Taylor, Form inquired. Yes, Taylor came back over to their table, looking a bit confused. Consider this trip for a, for a meal tonight, Foreign smiled as she handed Taylor free tickets to the concert. We all have had left as the back row, it looks like, but I hope that's okay. It is okay. Taylor's eyes lit up. You guys are the best band ever. Back row, Dusk asked. I didn't realize our t concerts were doing that well. Your concerts are selling excellently. Pretty much all the venues are packed, except for about 10 to 20 seats here and there, Gus informed. Whoa, that's incredible, Dust gasped. Mom, Dad, guess what? The Hex Girls just gave to us. Taylor ran off to inform her parents about the exciting news. I love how much this place feels, feel home this feels. Ford remarked at the cute sight of Taylor's excitement. Well, it's different since it's a different state. And it's a family restaurant. And the setup and decor obviously isn't the best same, but it feels nicer than Punch Pizza in Minneapolis. That's a great thing about traveling, Gus responded. Even if you don't like every place you go, you eventually find a little places in the world for you to enjoy and make you happy. And eventually you start to see a pattern between the places you enjoy being and begin to gain a deeper understanding of what the qualities of the place makes you feel home to. Gus had already insightful point. At the moment, she always felt that Oak Haven would be the only place that ever felt like home. Even if that were the case, though, perhaps the travel would make her understand herself on a deeper level. It was a delicious dinner at Broadway Grill and Bar. Foreign got the egg salad just like as Gus recommended, and she found it absolutely scrumptious. Everyone had loved their meal, except Dusk to an extent who complained about her burger being overly greasy. Thankfully, they had gotten to the feed here early enough for Bridget to leave a moment to run to the store for makeup, without missing the concert. The girls had set up their instruments before the performance, so Bridget would have to be the one waiting for the performance to begin anyway. Turner Hall was an architecture masterpiece as far as foreign is concerned. The four-story mansory building was built entirely of brick. It looked quite Victorian, it looked like it could use, perhaps, have been a school building in the olden days. Though it was pretty much sure Gus still had that was still built a town. As they walked through the building to get used to the ballroom where they'd be performing, Ford was reminded of the restaurant area that Gus had mentioned. She wondered why they hadn't just eaten there, but perhaps Gus thought the food was better at Broadway Bar and Grill, or just had some nostalgia over the place. The girls quickly went backstage in the ballroom, where they would be performing. The area was small and not nearly as spacious as the XL Energy Center, but it was still enough room to set up their instruments and move about. All right, I'm gonna go run and get some makeup. Nia saw a pharmacy a couple blocks away, so it shouldn't take me long, Bridget said. I'll come with you, Nia offered. Yeah, me too. It's not like there's anything else to do in the meantime, Sam replied. We'll see you girls soon. You're gonna rock the show. Bridget explained as she, Sam, and Nia left backstage. It sucks that Bridget forgot her makeup, Dust commented. Yeah, but it is cute that you two use the same makeup, though, Foreign smiled, remembering how Bridget had borrowed some this morning. We do? Dusk acted surprised. Oh, I thought you did this morning, Foreign commented. How the hell would I know the type of girl for makeup Bridget uses? Dusk said in a brisk voice. I'm not some girly girl who talks about her makeup all the time. I can't even remember the last time I've talked to a girl about my makeup. Foreign suddenly felt uncomfortable. Bridget had said that she was going to her room to borrow Dusk's makeup. Because she and Dusk used the same kind, 
But if Dust didn't even like how kind of makeup Bridget used, then she couldn't even remember the last time she talked about her makeup. Someone wasn't telling the truth. Ford knew that that person wasn't Dusk, as she had no reason to lie about something as simple as that. Foreign almost wanted to directly ask Dusk if Bridget had asked to use her makeup this morning, but she felt feared for the answer. Foreign, did you space out or something? Dusk asked. I'm generally curious. What made you think Bridget and I used the same makeup? Foreign supposed there was no reason to let herself wallow in worry. Perhaps asking Dusk could ease her nervousness. Maybe Dusk had just forgotten about the exchange with Bridget this morning. Um, Dusk, did you let Bridget borrow your makeup this morning? Foreign inquired. No, Dusk answered. That, this shit's expensive. I'm just not going to give out free samples. That was intentionally just a mid-worry, turned into a genuine discomfort. It seemed pretty clear now that Bridget had lied to her this morning about borrowing Dusk's makeup. Which left one question. Why the hell was Bridget in their room this morning? <laughs>